sitting next to Tracy Lynn Thomas, who shockingly is standing. <laughs> okay, so just the first part is, so I told Tracy Lynn, I wrote this book, Broadway Nights, I'm like, Tracy Lynn, you're featured in my book. So Tracy's like, she's like looking through the book, she's like, oh, what gnome de plume did he come up with me, for me, and like, what did he make up about me? Okay, yeah. it turns out I called the character Tracy Lynn. Spelled the correct way. T-R-A-C-I-O-I-N, no pretense about me being somebody else. And the character um, track is simply... <laughs> I am 5'2 in heels, what's the... On a box. On a box. <laughs> <laughs> That's just everything is just about how crazy short she is. So she's like, you didn't change my name and you just made fun of me. And you totally out of the shortness. I don't Sorry. understand. Uh, yeah. Any to the hoop. So I don't chase them forever. So, okay, we're going through three stories. So the first one is... Tracy Lynn came to me to coach for her big Les Mis Broadway audition, and which was a cover, if you can believe this, for um, Eponine, which you know is all belting, and Cosette. It's a crazy cover, and Tracy Lynn is a belter. So what did I go with you? Uh, what's the name of that song? Um, uh, Heart Full of Love. Heart Full of Love, yeah, that one. So I coached her on it. She sounded amazing on the Eponine stuff, and then, you know, the very end of Heart Full of Love goes up to B-flat. And what did I say to you? You said, uh, you can't hit that note. Don't even go to the audition. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he told me. <laughs> now, that's my, my, my coaching is very direct and honest. By the way, she couldn't hit it. I could. So I said, don't go to the callback because it's going to be devastating. So did you take my advice? No, no, no I didn't. Why? Did not. Because I figured out a way to kind of hit the note. Okay, I, now I, I've never even actually heard this, but she claims she showed up the audition. Now, how did you quote unquote kind of hit it? Um, in, instead of singing out and trying to support and make an actual note, I just sort of sucked air back over my vocal cords to see if I could make a whistle tone that matched the correct pitch. Okay, so, <laughs> so this, I have, we haven't even tried this. This is sort of what happened now at the audition. So it's gonna go, not a dream, not a dream. So where am I? Not a dream. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it goes. This is the note. So I know what, what was the note? What was the note? I got the point is. Stop and he told me not to go to the audition. I mean, shockingly. <laughs> so she goes, she sings that, and they by the way did not kick her out. They're like, wonderful. <laughs> so then they asked her to sing I Dreamed a Dream, which what you sight read? Yeah. And then the director, Lily by the end of it, weeping, <laughs> and then cast on the spot. So it sort of worked out. So I, I guess I'm an idiot for telling her not to go, but wouldn't you say not to go if you heard that? That cat wailing? <laughs> cat walling? Okay, so that's A. Okay, so then just B. So we're doing Joseph together. She was a narrator. She's amazing. Uh, and now, Kaislin has a video of this. So the B, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you conduct an orchestra, you have like a red light, and the red light goes on before the show to say you're about to begin the show, and then the light goes off, meaning begin the overture. That's how it happens in most pits, because you're not going to be on the phone the whole time with the stage manager. So I'm in the orchestra pit, act two's about to begin, and I'm like talking to musicians, I look up, literally the light had gone off. And I'm like, oh my God, act two's beginning. So I'm like... <laughs> and like, the curtain's not opening. I'm like, what's happening? We're so on stage <laughs> Okay, literally the light had never gone on to go off. <laughs> it was just the middle of intermission. So I, like, they're, everyone's in the dressing room, and I'm like, places! So I begin conducting, and like, wait, so my question is, what was actually happening backstage? Were you in your dressing room? We were all going crazy. We're like, what is he doing? Did we start? We didn't get a call. Oh my God. And we were And I actually mind. saw underneath the curtain, I just saw crazy feet, like, running back and forth. So finally, then it's supposed to go into, like, um, um, um. You have to do uh, what you uh, did. And then, um, Pharaoh, he's supposed to go right into that, but she wasn't there, so I was like, I've got to end it. So I went. It's a little intermission. In the and then intermission. there was another intermission, and then act two. Yep. Okay, so hence I'm not conducting anymore. <laughs> kind of jumped out of the business. Okay, final story. So Tracy Lynn and I, Tracy tried out for the show called Midsummer Nights. Uh, David Saint directed at musical theater where she just got out of college. And now, if you watch this video I did with Laura Benanti, we're like, people make excuses all the time before they sing, and they really shouldn't. Cut to Tracy Lynn didn't make enough of an excuse. She was like, "Hey guys, I'm sick at her audition." But her voice, okay, combined B. Arthur oh with Lauren Bacall, <laughs> Elaine Stritch. And a washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally just like, blah. It was awful. So I was like, oh, wow, she's an awful singer. But she's such a good actress because she's a great actress. I'm like, we got a cast from the show. But just FYI, 
the chick can't sing. So now, by the way, you never came to me and you're like, I actually can't sing. You just accepted the fact that. Well, I was a little scared of you. I mean, I'm sort of, <laughs> you just sort of proud of that. <laughs> anyway, the point is, I put every harmony line was like literally like this. You know, like the whole song was like up here, and I was like, Tracy, just go like ba ba ba. I literally, bah, bah, bah. I literally it was, bad. It was like she's a horrible singer. She can't belt at all. So cut to we're doing the show. Her, she's starting opposite oh, somebody uh -huh. else. And the very end of this one song goes, there guys. They both sang it in unison. And the other girl, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's an amazing belter. She sounds so phenomenal on that last note. Thank God she's supporting this clunker who can't hit it at all. So clunker. the Thank very you. last, now I go through the whole run of the show thinking she's an awful singer. The very last performance, Tracy Lynn's like, I lost my voice. I can't hit that last note and guys would be guys. I'm like, who cares? You sound awful on it anyway. I'm like, the other girl's amazing. I'll just let her hit it by herself. So we get to it. Tracy Lynn doesn't sing and I just hear, there goes. So the amazing note I've been hearing for two months was coming out of that yap and turns out the other girl had been marking it. So I was like, wait, what? So of course I bootlegged the show. I went back and listened to it. I'm like, Tracy Lynn, you have an amazing belt. So I literally wasted a full rehearsal period and a full run of a show because she gave a terrible audition. <laughs> So I was going to play you what actually she sounded like every night, and I had no idea. We, oh, we, literally, we, we literally have not sung this since <laughs> 1989. So we'll see if I can still do it. I don't know. Guys will be 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 guys. Hey, girl. They're guys. <laughs> I didn't know. Elaine Stretch. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs>